Senator Esslinger? Here. Senator Brown? Here. Senator Beck? Here. Senator Black? Here. Senator Crawford? Here. Senator Mosley? Senator Trent? Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, as you all know, we have six bills to hear today, and one's dealing with the uh, Commission of Administration, and the other five bills are dealing with social object objective scoring standards and public contracts. So we're going to actually start with Senate Bill 554. So that is Senator Eichel. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. State Senator Bill Igel from the 23rd State Senatorial District. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Senate Bill 554, 544 that permits the Commissioner of Administration to contract directly with other governmental agencies for the purchase of products, services, including construction and construction supplies and supplies, and also allow them to pursue or purchase from education-based cooperative contracts sourced from non-government entities that have an established track record of performance. This, uh, this bill, the genesis of this bill, uh, was, goes back to an issue that we dealt with earlier this year, finding out that uh, the Office of Administration has a series of rules of who they can contract for construction and rehabilitation projects in some of the school districts around the state. In particular, we were looking at roofing systems uh, because we had found a system and in a certain group of vendors that were able to provide roofing products and procedures at a, 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 a greatly fiscally reduced cost to the state, but because some of their rules prohibited them from uh, maneuvering through and using existing current dollars in the budget to go after these, we were going to make an adjustment to give the Office of Administration the flexibility under state law to take advantage of those. So I think we have some witnesses that are going to speak to that a little bit further, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, are there any questions for Senator Eigel? Seeing none. How many people are here to testify in favor of? How many people are here and testify in opposition to? All right, great. We'll have our first uh, in favor of. Hello, well, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Joe Brazel. I work for Trimco Building Group. Um, we're products, we ma manufacture building products and roofing products, wall products, coatings, and so forth. I've been with Trimco 26 years, and what I'm here to talk to you about is the uh, co op. The co op that we work with, we've had the co op contract, we competitively bid it. We've had it for 22 years. In the state of Missouri, we have it in probably about 40 states in the United States. And it's the AEPA, Associated Educa Education Purchasers Agents. So we, the, the schools buy from it, colleges buy from it, and they synergize from uh, the, the large purchases of all the schools. So the schools will we'll bid it every, every four years, and we've competitively won it. And um, so the schools will buy uh, projects from us, school wall projects, window projects, roofing. We do building envelope work, uh, roofing, and we uh, manufacture all the materials. So the, the, the customer buys the materials directly from us. We set up the job. We bid it out to other. We bid it at basically twice because then we have certified contractors bid the projects, and then the schools get a turnkey project buying the material direct from us at a discounted rate, and that's uh, it's a huge benefit to the school districts and the different government agencies. Dealing with the state of Missouri, it takes uh, nine to twelve months to turn a project around. It just it just takes a tremendous amount of time. There's a lot of uh, obstacles and it makes it very difficult for the uh, facilities department to go to do something different it's all they just do standard stuff no innovative ideas no uh, it seems like they're bound and so this would open up the door for them to save the taxpayers quite a bit of money streamline it and um, it would be a very efficient and effective manner to have this option and so that's sort of it in a nutshell okay are there any questions for this witness Senator Beck. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Are, are you allowed to build, uh, bid on projects now? Are we allowed to what? Bid on projects now? Um, well, it's funny. Um, there hasn't been, there's not been one roof project that went out the door um, in a year. It's, 
I get the I get all the bids notified to me, and it, the process is extremely slow. We looked at some projects for him, offered him alternative ideas on doing roof restorations, which is a 20-year full system, warranty system, which a lot of the schools do, and they don't. Um, they just do one system, and um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense when a lot of other people in the United States are using the systems that we offer, and so um, we don't. We don't. We don't. We haven't bid a roof project with the state for several years because it's a somewhat of a. So it, when when they put it out to bid, you don't bid it. N not the way they're putting it out to bid. We, we we haven't. There hasn't been one this year that we bid. No, there's been. There hasn't been any. See, it's it's um. We're not a con. We're a manufacturer. We're not a contractor. We don't we don't physically do the work. We have a we have a list of certified contractors that will bid the work. So when we go to when we go to a co-op to a school or something. We, they buy the material direct. It's been bid through a line item contract. It's, it's, and, and also, the contract is audited by the state. For instance, we did a school. We do a lot of schools in Franklin County. We did a school, and after we do the project and after it's done, they will go through the books, and if there are certain items that weren't done or weren't spent, then they get a rebate. We, don't, we cannot maximize on profit like a traditional construction job. That's not our business model. If the money is not spent, it goes back to the school <coughs> district. So it's, it's, it's also washed as well. So um, we're not, we, don't commodity, we don't bid in a commodity. We're not going to just bid when the, the specs are loose and they're not tight and they're not, the details aren't done as proper. That there's, I don't want to get real technical if, unless you want me to, but there's a thing called the uh, uh, National Roofing Contract Association. Every, every roof we put on has to be best practice, has a good details, have to have high wind uplift, has to be fire rated, has to be FM, factory mutual. And in a lot of instances, the standards aren't that high in certain areas. And so we're not going to devalue our systems just to be competitive or try to bid in against. We don't lower the bar when we're bidding in, 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 in government institutions. We're not going to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, to inquire, please. Okay, so connect the dots for me. How's this bill going to help you? Because I'm not quite, I'm not quite connecting the dots. Well, so the 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 um, how would it help me or how would it help you? Either one. I'm just trying to figure out how you play a role in the bill. Well, when when the state of Missouri puts out a roof bid, let's if there's there's good, better, best in roofing systems, and and it's typical boiler plate contractors put a TPO. It's a single ply. 60 mil roof system that's got about an 18 by industry standards about an 18 year average and so they're putting out when we put a roof on an institutional building we put on a, a roof that's going to have a high life cycle of about 40 years and so when you do life cycle costing you're you cannot when you spec out the cheapest roof you're getting yourself your race you're in a race to zero because every commodity broker is in there you got mule hide you got these these the, the warranties aren't even close to being equal they they that they don't have hail ratings and stuff like that. So it's going to be better for the state to put on a better roof because you're going to save more money with life cycle costs. And we're not, in, we're not in the low commodity market. We're not in the market where we're just competing for the lowest dollar roof. We don't do that. That's not our market. We've been in business over 100 years, and Trimco is a high-quality, long-service, life cycle roofing systems. So what we do is we sell the... We, I, they, how we benefit is by selling material. We, we're a material manufacturer's company. Okay, I'm still not really getting it, but but that's all right. Oh, so so are are you basically what what you're what you're saying? And, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But as a, uh, a a person who's going to need a new roof, maybe a state a government building or a school, that within the state contract you have a very narrow scope of what you can bid or what that roof system looks like. And so this would give an opportunity to broaden the scope of the state contract. Well, yeah, they don't do outside roof, the state contract. They don't do roof restorations. They don't think out of the box. They don't do okay. other solutions. Does it broaden the scope of what's considered a state contract? So, Madam Chairman, if I could jump in here, I think I think and kind of to address uh, the questions from Senator Crawford and Senator Beck. So, we, as we know, got a tremendous amount of money from the federal government uh, that has to be spent within a certain amount of time. Now. To Senator Beck, to your your question, the, the the this isn't about whether or not folks can actually bid the project, but in order to take advantage of those funds, there are contractors out there that can come. Could be roofing, could be a number of different things that can offer the state 
uh, significant cost savings to replace, for example, all the roofs and all the schools using funds that are only available in the short term at a much discounted rate than they otherwise would see if they bid them out one at a time that would take potentially 10 to 15 years to bid every school district in the state. And this, I'm just using that as an example. But the, o, the Office of Administration, which has rules that can accelerate the bid process, are not flexible enough to take advantage of some of the short-term opportunities that may exist. So what this bill does is giving the Office of Administration some additional flexibility on the accelerated bid process so that they can take advantage of maybe some, some ways to save money on the construction of buildings. And it could be this, it could be a number of different things, while we have a short-term opportunity to take advantage of the federal money that has to be spent by a certain time. I think it's, I think it's next year that we have to spend that money by. That there, there's just not enough flexibility in the rules for OA to take advantage of those. So that's what this bill is trying to address. So it's not about that someone can't bid a project. It's just that our normal system of bidding projects could take, like I said, 10 to 15 years before you got through the entire process. Good, thank you. Thank you, Senator Black. Senator, I think this is probably, you're gonna be the one that answers it. I don't, yeah, but we've used schools as an example. All, Just all, as an example. Yeah. Right, but what I'm asking you on schools, I see that as a local entity. They have their bidding process. When I think about 76 schools in my district, mm -hmm. will this affect them? Because we keep going back to that. Do they, do, does this language and what OA puts out affect local school systems? Because you said you have put roofs on in Franklin County, right? Yeah. So, so this affects state facilities, state facilities yes. and some of that might be state schools around the deal okay got it. it's all state facilities I, I and I think they're I think the reason that we have this particular vendor here is because they did offer a uh, a, a solution that could actually that I looked into and I believe this could save the state a significant amount of dollars but OA doesn't actually have the flexibility to take advantage of that so it could be schools it could be any of the state facilities I just well, I'm just looking for a better process for they can take advantage of the, the dollars okay. that are available so that was the part where I yes. got confused yes, yes was that OA runs the bids in those 76 schools and that is correct that's correct. state facilities thank you absolutely Okay, so basically it's a, a flexibility for OA to take advantage of uh, revenues coming in right now. It broadens right. the scope of what is in those specs where it's not just boilerplate. They could get a little bit, okay. Correct. Which that, is, that is, and then stays within the state contract, so the schools are, at least that stays fast. Correct. Okay. Uh, and we've had several conversations with OA to determine if the rules that have been developed and the state law that's already in place would allow them to take advantage of these short-term opportunities. The answer came back no to us, which is why we filed this legislation. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you. Senator Eichel, do you have any closing remarks? Oh, oh we have one more testimony here. I'll be real quick. I just want to explain. So be sure you leave a witness for me and state your name and who you're with. Um, Richard McIntosh. I'm here on behalf of Trimco, but here as kind of a broader expert on purchasing. The state of Missouri statute says that the state of Missouri can buy off of other state cooperative procurement contracts. The state of Missouri, if you bid a, a contract, um, it is automatically, unless stated otherwise, a cooperative procurement contract. Any other political subdivision in the nation can buy off the contract. So local, city, educational, another state, anybody can buy off of a state of Missouri contract unless it's specifically stated otherwise. So. This bill simply gives the state the option to purchase off of educational cooperative procurement contracts. It's permissive. It just gives another tool in the toolbox for OA to be able to move. It takes, at, if you're lucky, nine to 12 months to move something through the RFP process. The truth of the matter is, Senators, is you've got too much money and too little purchasing staff to get everything accomplished. And I'm afraid that if we don't provide the state some other options, We'll be looking at a very ugly scenario of do we got to spend money back to the federal government that otherwise we really needed to use here. So this is just another tool. It doesn't mandate anything. And it really follows the same nomenclature that we're already doing in purchasing. All right. Thank you so much, sir. And Senator Black. Thank you, Richard. I think you explained it to me. When I was at home and I want to buy a tractor or something like that, the only thing when I went through this consortium to do it, I could bid it out 
or I could go to the state consortium and buy that tractor, buy that skid steer out of this uh, already negotiated lowest bid process. And that's what you're wanting this product to be able to be put in, the thing that I use to buy equipment out of. Exactly. You got it. Thank you. And it's been used all over in those contracts. Might be five states went together to do that contract with John Deere, with Caterpillar, et cetera. Exactly. Okay. Thanks for coming up and explaining it. Not a problem. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness? Thank you so much. Seeing none, Senator Eigel, do you have any closing remarks? I do not, Madam Chairman. Thank you. All right, that concludes the hearing on Senate Bill 544. So now um, we're going to hear the five bills dealing with social objective scoring standards. And to streamline this hearing and testimony, we're going to have all senators present their bill, and then we're going to hear the testimony in favor of these. So when you come up to provide testimony, if you have a specific aspect of any of these bills, you make, make sure you address that. Um, anything else? All right, so you have your first bill. All right, so we're going to hear Senator Eigel's Senate Bill 177. So proceed when you're ready, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. State Senator Bill Eigel, happy to, from the 23rd State Senatorial District, introducing Senate Bill 177. This act prohibits any public entity from discriminating or giving preferential treatment to any bidder, offerer, contractor, or subcontractor when engaged in procuring or letting contracts for any purpose based on environmental, social, and governance scores defined in the act. So this bill is very straightforward. It's prohibiting any public entity at any part of the state from using ESG scores in a calculation to award contracts. Very simple. I think that at most folks here on the committee are familiar with what ESG is. We're seeing it being used as a way to discriminate based on so social behavior in other countries, particularly China. And that is uh, the antithesis, I think, of the American experience. And so I think that's why we're going to hear a number of bills trying to prohibit this in the state level. And that's exactly what Senate Bill 177 does. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Senator Igel. Um, are there any questions for the senator? All right, seeing none. Uh, so let's see. The next bill will be Senate Bill 316, 316 which is Senator Hoskins. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. For the record, State Senator Denny Hoskins, representing the 21st Senatorial District here today to present uh, Senate Bill 316. 316 is very similar, maybe exactly the same as the prior bill that was just uh, presented dealing with environmental, social, and governance scores. I, I'd just like to offer an example. An example might be a, a bidder uh, or contractor that lives in a state where electricity is primarily produced by coal could be at a disadvantage when bidding on a project uh, versus a company that was getting electricity from wind farms if that was one of the uh, qualifications when it came up for a bid. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Senator. Do we have any questions? Seeing none. And we have our, do you have any closing remarks or anything? Nope. No. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we're at Senate Bill 50. Is Senator Moon here? Not seeing Senator Moon, so let's go to Senator Carter. Good morning, Jim. Madam Chairwoman, members of the committee, I'm Senator Jill Carter, District 32. Similar to what um, Senator Eigel testified and Senator Hoskins, this, under this act, public entities are prohibited from entering into certain contracts with a company unless a contract includes a written certification that the company is not currently engaged in and agrees for the duration of the contract that they will not engage in any kind of economic boycott. This language is similar to the language that was passed a few years ago having to do with the Anti-Discrimination Act that the governor signed on January 13th in 2020. Um, so with that, I'll take any questions. Do we have any questions? All right, seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll go on to our next bill, which is Senator Coleman. And this is Senate Bill 377. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Coleman, Center for the 22nd Senatorial District. And corporations have been really struggling with how to address wanting to broaden the scope of what they were created for. Um, corporations are legal fiction that are existing to allow people uh, more flexibility in the way they conduct business in the state. And in exchange for certain 
regulations and responsibilities, the state grants them personhood status. And starting in the 1990s, corporations were wanting to move away from only a profit-based model to wanting to make sure that they're able to address maybe other types of interests, right? So they have a, some sort of a so societal benefit interest. But when we set up corporations, we set them up with the idea of protecting the shareholder or the member of an LLC to be able to make money first and foremost. And so when you kind of rejigger what those, those responsibilities are, um, the protections and the rights don't always make sense. And so there was a benevolent corporation push through the late 90s to try to broaden the scope. You might remember Tom's Shoes or Ben & Jerry's Ice Creams. We're kind of at the forefront of that. And what we've seen is an evolution among our corporate boards to move away from just profit, but not moving the corporate structure. And so what my bill does is it recognizes that the state is one of the largest consumers, often in our country, and it attempts to use the, it, the buying power of the state to rein in non-profit making decisions. So if a corporate board is going to take into other accounts things that are not at the, sh the forefront of making money for the shareholders or the members of the corporations, the state is saying we're not going to participate in certain types of those activities. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to protect the economic interests of the state. It's very vital that we are a strong, robust economy. And when we start to take in other nebulous ideas about what a corporation's main purpose should be, in particular, one that's going to decrease the success of that corporation economically, um, we have a right as a state to weigh in as far as the way that we act as a consumer. I think you're going to see there's some differences between the various bills, whether there's private enforcement actions or whether there's mere certification to the state, similar to what we did in 2020. My bill is, is um, I think, a clean version of saying, hey, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're focused on what the state can do as an actor in the economy, although I do think it might be at some point worth looking at our corporate statutes to limit, again, activities that corporations can be involved in. So happy to answer any questions, Madam Chair. Do we have any questions for our sponsor? Okay. And if the chair and the committee will forgive me, I have another committee that I need to go to, so I'm going to present my bill and then leave and let the witnesses speak for themselves. So thank you for hearing the bill. And you bet. Thanks. Well, we're all very busy, but thank you. Yeah, of yes. course. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now I've noticed that Senator Moon has joined us. So let's, let's have Senator Moon come up and present uh, Senate Bill. What is 50. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee. Um, Mike Moon from uh, the Missouri 29th Senate District. And I know there have been a couple of bills already presented on the same topic of ESG. Senate Bill 50, probably along the same vein. Uh, it prohibits the, um, the, any public entity from considering ESG scores when letting contracts or bids. So that's essentially it. If you have questions uh, that vary from the others, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Well, you weren't in the room, but we went ahead and we're hearing all the bills, and then we'll hear the pros and cons. So. Okay. Very so good. that's what we're doing. So okay. any, do we have any questions for the senator? All right. Seeing none. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. So now we're going to hear witness testimony in favor of. Uh, please be clear in your testimony. I know there's um, several people interested. If you are referencing a particular bill or provision on, on your witness form, so be sure you make, you make that note on your witness forms. List which bills you are in favor of when you leave it on the table. Please keep your comments to a testimony of under three minutes, just in case. Just get a show of hands. How many are here to testify in favor of? Okay, that's less than I thought was going to have. How many here are in, here to testify in opposition to? Okay, I think we're going to be all right. So let's go ahead with the three with uh, three minutes. If you feel like you've got to have extra time, I might be able to help you out, but uh, let's go. Good morning, James. Good so morning. you're here to testify in favor of? In favor of all five uh, bills, SB 50, SB 177, SB 316, th SB 377, and SB 430. Uh, good morning, Madam good morning. Chair. For the record, James Harris representing the Opportunity Solutions Project. Um, what I'd say about the ESG and I think why it matters is if you think about what uh, investing has done for average citizens of this country or the state, how it has really opened the doors to creating wealth, saving for college, uh, retirement, etc. I could give stories from I remember my grandfather in 1955 when they went the entire year without a Coca-Cola. They only ate bologna because they were saving money to buy their first mutual fund. 
And I remember one time he showed me the check when they were retired. And he said, you know, James, this was more than, the, the dividend check was more than what we had saved up that year and how it was really a sacrifice for them. But they were just normal people and saving, putting that money away, it created wealth for them. That's what the stock market investing has done. And in, if businesses get away from making profit, that's going to impact state workers with their pensions. It's going to impact citizens that are saving for retirements, et cetera. So we think these bills are good. They probably need to be worked out. I think Senator Coleman said it quite well. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the witness? Senator Beck. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Senator. Just to be clarified, Opportunity Trust, where are you guys located at? Naples, Florida, Senator. Naples, Florida. So what is Naples, Florida concerned with Missouri? Just my curiosity. We work on, pub great question, public policy in about 34 states, including Missouri. And I think their concern on this bill is really just the impact to whether it's public employees, retirement, or just average citizens. So, I mean, I look through this bill and there's some concerning things in it to me, in, in all of them, and uh, the way in. And, and then I, th I guess the other part is, when I see the ESG, one of the things that really truly concerns me is where it says the, the wages and working hours of the working. So uh, companies that say that would probably use prison, Chinese prison labor or something like that to, to make their products to sell to the state, that would be, you know, I would believe it probably a, a, a give them a bad ESG score. Well, I don't think anyone wants to buy stuff that's coming from Well, I'm, I'm just asking you a question. In China. Correct. No, no. I think, um, I think all these bills probably need some refinement on what these definitions are. And, you know, there might be, as I think, was, I can't remember, last week I testified on a similar bill. Uh, different committee, you know, some of the, like, uh, Mosier's is to act and maybe some of the other boards can continue to act on making those decisions internally with resolutions uh, as opposed to statute. But I don't, I don't think Chinese labor would qualify as. Okay, let's use, like, undocumented workers coming in or okay. stuff like that in, in, in companies and doing contracts with those. And, and then, and then I'll, I'll actually go into working wages and hours, things that we have with the state minimum wage, prevailing wage, all those other things would be left out of the equation. Well, I think ultimately the business is, well, if you're making, I guess there's two things we might disagree. I think if I'm making an investment decision, it should be based off making profit. If I'm investing, the difference on like if a, if a fund manager is handling my money or if I have a mutual fund is, are we, do, are we talking about the state doing contracts with someone, or are we talking well, about Well, there's a, I guess there, there's five different bills. If we're talking about contracting, yes, I mean. Uh, we can talk about investment, too, but let's we'll okay. talk about contracting. Um, but on contracting, you know, I think we don't want to put too many restrictions in. Um, I think trying to avoid some of this ESG stuff is, would be good. I think to your, um, maybe the contracting stuff needs to be fixed or changed a little bit. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, definitely. If the, these go forward, I'm sure we're going to have a conversation for sure. And then I have other issues, too, but I can, I can address those when the, when the appropriate people get up. But I appreciate you coming. Thanks, in. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness? I mean, for this your witness. Right. So next person in test, testimony in favor of. In favor of. Okay. So now we're going to move on to an opposition, too. So good morning, Phil. Uh, Philip Arnson with the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and we like to go on the record in opposition of Senate Bill 377 and Senate Bill 430. Um, we view those two as a backdoor business mandate. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's trying to dictate the policy of businesses when a lot of the policies mentioned in the bill don't necessarily have to do with the project that the state is putting out a bid on or that they're needing a vendor for. Um, the other concern we have there, too, is the definitions are somewhat vague. Um, so we've offered to work with the uh, sponsors as well to try to uh, clear up some of those concerns um, on those definitions. And then something just to be aware of for the, for the committee moving forward on these is for a, a lot of projects, particularly bigger, more complex projects that the state puts out bids for, there are a limited number of vendors that can even uh, put in a bid, uh, just because especially when you get into IT things where it's very technical, uh, very large. Uh, you might only have less than five vendors, and this could potentially uh, exclude many of those vendors. So the state might only be left with 
one or two, or in some instances, zero uh, vendors, and then wouldn't be able to fulfill that RFP. So I guess a little bit of uh, awareness on that part. Uh, but with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for this witness? Senator Baker, Brown. Which, uh, which two bills did you mention at the beginning? Uh, Senate Bill 377 and Senate Bill 430. Okay. Hey. Any other questions? Senator Beck. Yep, real quick. So nor normally we're not on the same side of a lot of different things, but <laughs> <clears throat> let me ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. One, I've been around here for seven years now, and I remember some of these bills that were carried by Republicans that came through the House that gave – uh, benefit to some of these benevolent corporations and did some things to change the laws around here. Correct? If, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the bills that help corporations. Yes, or? but benevolent corporations, things like that, and uh, social con social conscious corporations and things of that nature. A couple questions. One of the things that also it says you can't have a policy. Is it a policy on bribery? Isn't that one of the bills saying there about bribery and? Uh, I'll, I'll have to look. I don't recall reading that, but it. Yeah, there's bribery in there. If you have policies on bribery, that would be held against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of confused. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure where we're going with this, the, yeah. these things. It seems like we go from – this is kind of a statement, so you probably don't have to answer. <laughs> but we, it seems like we go from one thing to another thing to another thing that everybody's outraged about. And, uh, you know, whether it's DEI that we're going to we hear about, whether it's this, ESG, which came up – a lot last year, and, and the senator from uh, Lawrence and I had a conversation about this at three o'clock in the morning one day. If uh, and he, I'm sure he remembers that, but but uh, but anyway, um, it's frustrating some of the policies that I see that they're that were they're against bribe, uh, bribery policies. Can you yeah, speak I to mean that? some of the um, <clears throat> you know the definitions. Uh, yeah, bribery of corruption policies of a corporation. Yeah, I mean a lot of times they'll they'll have policies that may not have anything to do with. A, for political purposes, they may have that policy for, um, you know, because it's in the best interest of their company or their employees, or it might be the most profitable policy for them uh, based off of how they operate. So yeah, we so just don't like interfering with that. But if they're trying to, to, to eliminate that bribery and corruption, that would be held against them in these bills. I'm, so I'm thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for this witness? Seeing none. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll have our next. Witness in opposition to, and would you state the bills in which you are testifying? Uh, yes, good morning, uh, Chair and uh, Committee. Uh, my name is Michael Berg. I am testifying against all five bills, I'm representing the Missouri Sierra Club. And first want to point out that it's, it's, it's strange to me that they're all being heard together because uh, the Senate Bill 5, uh, sorry, Senate Bill 50, 177, and 316 actually are significantly different and contradict uh, Senate Bill 377 and 430 in significant ways. Uh, the first three, uh, or the, the, the first three prohibit discrimination against and preferential treatment for certain behavior, while the uh, last two actually mandate discrimination against such behavior. So the, the bills, uh, if they both pass, they would contradict each other. Um, so our main concern, you know, there's a lot of concerns, but is, we're an uh, environmental organization, and, you know, it was about 90 degrees in St. Louis on April 3rd. We've got armadillos in Jefferson City walking around. You had these terrible, tragic uh, tornadoes, Bollinger County recently, and, you know, if, events are happening, droughts, floods, rising sea levels, and these bills would prohibit the state using its contracting power to deal with these problems uh, or else other serious problems such as labor issues uh, and uh, and it's to, for two of the bills it would pre prevent using our contracting power to actually discriminate based on bribery, corruption, or transparency uh, policies. So the, fir the first th three bills, 50, 177, 316, um, we should have that contracting power, and there was, if you look at the fiscal note, there were serious problems because they're, you could create a bureaucratic nightmare for the state, considering that uh, they would have to monitor and enforce not only for uh, contractors, but for subcontractors. And the OA FMDC uh, pointed out that um, it, it, would, it would cost 
to do this, and it would also limit the competition pool. And this is a problem with all of these. You know, you're saying this company can't do it, this company can't do it. Limiting the competition pool, uh, that means higher prices for our Missouri taxpayer and perhaps lower quality services. Uh, they, they brought up for, for those three bills, an example, the Department of Corrections. They have a vocational program which, uh, you know, s sources certain recycled materials so they're able to sell their product. Uh, that could be considered a metric or score uh, under these bills, and uh, they're concerned that they wouldn't be able to continue these products, th these projects, and a, a lot of other, I mean, if they weighed in, I think a lot of other uh, agencies would have the same issues. Now, if you look at 377 and 430, those are, in our opinion, much more extreme bills. These, these represent extreme imposition on the freedom of companies to spend their own money or not spend it uh, where they want. And uh, so these, these bills would be like, uh, so, so the, the, fir the first three bills to, to, to go back actually contradict several, or, or, uh, several bills, uh, I, I guess it's got a little more to do, because there, there's, there's five bills we're testifying on here, if, if, if you see, and they're, they, they're, they're very different in scope. They actually contradicted laws such as the Israel Anti-Discrimination Act they would contradict those acts. So it contradicts existing laws. The other bills sort of take that act and take it way farther. Um, it, you know, it's telling contractors, and not only contractors, the contractors of contractors, what they can and can't do with their own money. It's serious First Amendment issues with these, uh, and it would be very difficult to enforce. If you were to actually enforce instead of just sign, sign the affidavit, you would have to have lots of people looking at what is the behavior of companies with their own money, which should be their own right to do? Are they boycotting this or do they just happen to not spend it? You know, you're looking at issues like environmental issues, uh, firearms, uh, policies on uh, gender issues and abortion. Um, and you have the, the same problem of the reduced competition, higher prices. Uh, it could harm pensions. Some people might be speaking to that because it would limit the ability of pension funds to uh, invest in certain funds. Uh, the fiscal note of the public schools and education employment retirement system brought that up. It could clog, uh, this we're talking Senate Bill 377, 430, could clog the courts with claims of damage, which are allowed to uh, do file suits under damage in Cole County courts. And uh, it could, you know, it, there'd be wide discretion of the Attorney General to prosecute which could lead to problems. Uh, you got the contradictions. And, and all of these, you know, in our opinion, they have real world consequences. They're also saying a statement that the state of Missouri doesn't want to use its contracting power and doesn't care about environmental issues, doesn't care about labor issues, and some of these bills doesn't care about bribery or corruption. And they seem to be making the statement. And so, you know, we oppose them all, uh, but since, since they, they Two of them do very different things than three others. We oppose sure. them all for different reasons, yes. Okay. Well, thank you so very much. And uh, do we have any questions for this witness? Thank you for your testimony. Do we have any others in opposition? Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Sharon Goway-Jones here today on behalf of Promo Missouri. We oppose specifically Senate Bills 430 and 377. We th think that they are probably an unconstitutional uh, invasion into the freedom of speech and also conflate legitimate business interests with uh, state political interests. Um, and what I mean by that is businesses have found it to be very successful to um, take different strategies, including the two that were mentioned by one of the sponsors, Tom's, Ben and Jerry's, that sort of thing. They have found a successful business strategy in making certain types of statements. And uh, those two bills specifically would put the state into that business decision, which is uh, both probably not a, a policy that we've ever done before and I think would lead us to an unconstitutional path. But for those reasons, we specifically oppose those two bills. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank, thank you for you your testimony. Much. Do we have anybody else here in, in who would like to testimony, like to testify in opposition to? Seeing none, do we have anybody here for informational purposes only? Seeing none, then I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. 
I received a second. A se okay, second. Uh, so I have a second. I have a second. We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming out this morning. Okay, you guys, that went a whole lot faster than I thought it was going to. I know, it's bizarre.